Well, if you're a little down that the college football season is officially over after the national championship game wrapped up with Georgia winning back-to-backs, now we got great news here for you because we're still talking college ball as it relates to the transition to the NFL as we welcome you here to the Move the Sticks Senior Bowl Roster Reveal Show here this year. Hello, everybody. Great to be here with you. Rhett Lewis and part of the Move the Sticks team, of course, Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks, and as always here with us, the Executive Director of the Reese's Senior Bowl, Jim Nagy. Welcome back, Jim. Great to have you, man. Um, you you, you kind of help us fill the void, right, as college football <laughs> season ends and, and we get uh, ready to head down to Mobile. Give us a sense of what you're excited about here as we get set to, to really get down there in full force and kick this game off. Just excited about the rosters. Like every year, you know, we – you work all fall, really year round. I think we started on this process a couple of years after, a couple of weeks after last year's game, and and now we see it to fruition here in January. So excited to get all the players in, the opportunity they have. Excited to get you guys all back down to Mobile. Hopefully, you don't bring this rain with you that's outside <laughs> in LA. I mean, I leave I leave rainy Mobile to come to, to rainy LA. Right. But uh, no, we're excited to get all you guys back down to back down to Mobile. It's a, look, it's an exciting game. Uh, having played in the game, I just remember what is on the line. It's not only an opportunity to play in another game in college, but an opportunity to play in front of NFL personnel, scouts, coaches, all that other stuff. So it's a great opportunity to continue to submit your status as a top prospect. I'm looking forward to taking all these practices in and then being able to share it with everybody at home. NFL Plus is going to kind of open this whole thing up for us now. So if there are portions of practice that you missed out on, you're not going to miss out on it anymore. We're going to get a chance to cover all of it this year. One-on-ones are fantastic. Looking for that next Bailey Zappi uh, this year. Looking <laughs> yeah. for someone that's going to yeah. be kind of an off-the-radar quarterback that we might see playing games next year. I can't wait. Uh, and we got one that we're going to get to as we reveal all of the quarterbacks headed down to Mobile. But first, let's give you a look at what DJ was talking about here. The Reese's Senior Bowl live practices begin Tuesday, 1230 Eastern time. Go all the way through Thursday, February 2nd. Uh, and then, of course, the Senior Bowl game. Uh, kicks off 2.30 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday, February 4th, right here on NFL Network. Cannot wait for the festivities down in Mobile, of course, where we will see another terrific quarterback class that Jim has put together here. Uh, some big names of college football that have put up some massive uh, numbers. We just saw Max Duggan, of course, in the college football national championship. And this will be an opportunity for him to remind people uh, why he is on this list after what was a disappointing performance from TCU uh, this past night. But let's get to one of the lesser known names here as we talk uh, a little bit about Tyson Bajan from Shepard here and just kind of give you a look at uh, his profile and where he came from. So Shepherd University, I mean, uh, makes sense, located in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, Division II school. Most prolific passer in Division II history with just over 17,000 career passing yards and more career passing touchdowns than any quarterback in any NCAA division. So a terrifically productive player, real competitor too, since his dad was a professional Arm, arm wrestler, uh, which is great. So uh, excited to learn a little bit more about Tyson Bajan as we continue down this path to Mobile. But, uh, you know, let's start here, DJ, with a guy we saw, um, you know, didn't have his best effort against uh, Georgia no. in, in the national title game, but a real opportunity for Max Duggan here to show his stuff down in Mobile. Yeah, he didn't have the horses in that game. Right. I mean, TCU was overmatched, but you just have to go back to the previous week and see what he did in that Michigan game. Go back to the conference championship game which they lost to Kansas State, but he showed you his grit and his toughness, what he's all about to put TCU in a position to win that football game. This is somebody that's a little bit of a roller coaster. It's going to be a little bit inconsistent, kind of like that TCU football team. You got some slow starts, and then all of a sudden he would take off. A lot of it with his legs, extending plays, big plays down the field. I want to see him in Mobile just have a steady, consistent week. You know, accuracy is going to be something we're keeping our eyes on here. I think he enters this week as a mid-round guy. We'll see if he can help himself down in Mobile. Yeah, and, and look, we just talked a little bit about, uh, you know, Tyson Bajan, but I'd love to get your thoughts on how you end up finding a guy from Shepherdstown, West Virginia, uh, who has put up so – I mean, the numbers are incredible, and I'm just kind of curious to what you expect to see from him down in Mobile. Well, we saw him uh, over the summer at the Manning right. Camp, right, uh, down there in Thibodeau. Uh, with Tyson, again, all-time leading touchdowns leader in NCAA history. You, you got to invite that guy, right? And when we went through the fall, he was the only sub-FBS quarterback. There wasn't a single FCS quarterback that the league had a draftable great on so again he was in the mix with a lot of these day three guys um and you got to bring the small school guy to let him to let him show his stuff so you know he interestingly he jumped in the portal over the summer 
He really wanted to get interest talking to him. He wanted to get interest from one of the Blue Blood programs, USC, Notre Dame is what he was looking for. Got offers from Maryland and West Virginia. Said, you know what, I'm going to run it back with my boys. They make, yeah, the, they make the D2 semifinal. Um, and again, when you were around him, like it, we hand delivered the invite. That was one of the small school nice. guys we did that with this year. And to see the reaction of the players around him, you can tell he's one of their guys. So the leadership is off the charts. And again, like we, you were around him. He's 6'3 verified. He's 220 verified. So he has NFL size. He has NFL tools. He can really layer the football. Now let's see him do it against the big boys. No, you talk about the big boys. He certainly is going to have an opportunity to show and prove that he can play on a big stage. But how about Jaron Hall from BYU? This is a guy who has been efficient and effective with the ball in his hands, does a great job of taking care of the ball. And then when you look at the numbers, over 6,000 passing yards, 52 touchdowns, only 11 interceptions. We think about the number of guys that had an opportunity to start games this year. Almost 70 quarterbacks started games. When you look at his skill set, his understanding of the offense, the way that he runs the offense as a manager, he's certainly going to have an opportunity in the National Football League. I'll tell you what, some of these guys, you have that moment where they kind of popped on the scene. And that, to me, when you think about Jay Kane or Fresno State, think back to that UCLA game a couple years ago where he just kind of laid it all out there. It just, just taking shot after shot, getting back up and delivering strikes incredibly accurate there's a, a clip from that game right there just an efficient passer has that ability as a natural kind of thrower be able to drop your arm down different arm angles just a football player he can create make things happen um i i think teams are going to fall in love when they meet with him from everything i've been told about him intelligence character wise uh, he's going to be a popular one in mobile yeah, and I want to talk about a guy who I think is going to hit all the right notes down in Mobile, and that's, of course, uh, Clayton Toon uh, from the University of Houston. Come on, nothing, DJ? Yeah, you nothing? Were. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, look, I mean, yeah, I can sit here and talk about his 12,000 career passing yards, 104 passing touchdowns, but I, I'm going to tell you this, and I don't know exactly how throwing footballs at golf carts accurately is going to translate to the NFL, but that's what he was able to do amongst a group of 40 of the best quarterbacks in a competition down in Thibodeau, Louisiana at the Manning Passing Academy and won, okay, so uh, Clayton Toon, I think he was just a really fun guy uh, to watch on tape. Obviously, he had that game against SMU that was incredible, right, with 16 combined passing touchdowns. He accounted for seven of them, but also ran for the first touchdown of that game, 55 yards. He's a guy that I feel like fits today's build that can get out of trouble and make some plays improvisational-wise, like out on the run, and then also uh, just a phenomenally talented passer that comes from that air raid system. Um, so really nice group of quarterbacks that you put together here, Jim. Excited for it down in Mobile. Let's get to some of the running backs that we're talking about here. A national champion is headed to Mobile, Kenny McIntosh, who we saw last night at SoFi, hoisting hardware for Georgia. A couple of fullbacks in this group that maybe more like H-backs could fit in the tight end group, too, with Josh Wiley of Cincinnati and Braden Willis, who we'll talk about here in just a little bit when Brent Venables, head coach of OU, joins us uh, there from uh, the Oklahoma Sooners. But, Bucky, let's begin with a player who I think is still running through the collective consciousness of the USC defense <laughs> in that bowl game. Yeah, I mean, you talk about Tajay <laughs> Taj Taj Spears, Spears yeah. coming from Tulane. What I loved about it, having a chance to watch him at the Cotton Bowl, he tore them up. He continued to do what he's done throughout his career. This season had over 1,500 yards, has a way to put the ball in the paint that you see with 19 touchdowns, and it's the combination of skills that he brings to the table. Stop, start, quickness, balance, body control, great vision. But what I love about it, his ability to put the ball in the paint it's hard to find running backs that can do it consistently. Not much better than what you saw Spears do. Yeah, getting the commitment from Spears was big. He's an underclassman. We love getting the juniors in the game. We had 16 last year, 12 the year before that. So we got Tajay and Kenny McIntosh literally in like a 24-hour span. So Tajay had the big cotton bowl. We flip it to Kenny McIntosh here. You know, had a monster game in that Ohio State game. I think that the thing that pops off, the tape when you watch it is the explosiveness, whether it's in the pass game or in the run game. I mean, this guy's just got an instant gear for a big back. You know, last year, that, that running back room, there's always such a crowd in that room. Last year was Zamir White and James Cook. This year, even those guys moved on, they're still, they're, still playing a, more they're still playing a rotation, right? So he sees this as an opportunity to come to Mobile, really show himself. I think in the past game stuff is where he's going to set himself apart, running wheel routes, catching the ball downfield. So um, getting Kenny McIntosh and Tache, um, two big gets for us. I'm going to go ahead and go on record right now and say I'm going to have uh, three, Let's maybe four Tajay Sharp uh, instead of Tajay Spears goof-ups yeah. uh, oh, during Senior Bowl week. That's coming. That was on the tip of my tongue. I'm like, that, man, that's that's a, I got you. Yeah, that's coming. Yeah. That, that's coming. Um, all right, if we're going to talk about running backs, we've got to go to the best school in the country. 
Uh, let's go to App State. Oh, let's talk wow. about a little Cameron Peoples here, <laughs> uh, who feels like he's been at my alma mater, Appalachian State, for about 10 years because he's been a key part of their rushing attack. And similar, look, you see the numbers there, you're 593 yards. You might go, how is this guy going to the Senior Bowl? They are another team that has had a, a just a ton of quality backs. They roll them all through. He's battled some injuries throughout his career. But I know one thing, I was there over the summer, you go in the weight room, and he's not tough to identify. He has an NFL body on him, carries it really well. Once you get out in the open field, he can really go. A little bit of an upright runner, but he's a home run hitter with size. So I'm excited to see him. You look at uh, uh, Rashad White, what he's done with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think you have a similar type of a skill set here. And not to pin this comp on him because he, he's not this guy, but there's a little Derrick Henry in terms of the upright Ooh. stuff, the yeah. breakaway gear. But for a big back, he's got feet. So. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, guys, I want to talk briefly about a, a guy. No, who... let's talk some more about App State here. <laughs> let's <laughs> maybe, we got another one coming. <laughs> the quietest 1,600-yard rushing season maybe ever. Chase Brown at Illinois was such a key piece of the Fighting Illini's resurgence this year under Brett Bielema. And I got to see him in person making my way around the Big Ten. Um, unstoppable, like truly, often in, in his games. I mean, he could slash. And the thing that really impressed me was his vision. And then once he sees it, the ability to accelerate in a phone booth, I uh, thought uh, Chase Brown is going to be a guy that has an opportunity to really make an impact with NFL evaluators uh, down at the Senior Bowl. Uh, excited to see what he puts uh, out there on tape at the practices and then, of course, at the game. Um, really, really going to be fun to watch it. You know, one of those guys that maybe when it's all said and done uh, ends up uh, putting himself in conversation to be one of the best to ever do it at the Senior Bowl. And right now we're going to give him a little bit of advice <laughs> from some guys uh, who have already had that distinction based on their productivity down at the Senior Bowl and some Hall of Famers. If I play my senior year and I have a chance to be on the the best of the best all-star team, which is what it is, and they're telling you you can play, you get you actually get to play one more college game, you know, with the best dudes in college, then I go, shoot, heck yeah. I, look, you mean I get to play two more quarters? Football, I'm telling them now at, at 40. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. You've been playing this game for a long time. All you're doing is auditioning for your next job. Yeah, take advantage of the opportunity. Uh, say yes, no reason not to come. Um, get get involved. Throw yourself in and be invested. Be invested in the relationships. Uh, could lead to the team that you're going to play on. Could lead to long-term uh, friendships, whether it be the guys that you're playing with. Um, and, and obviously, just maybe it, it can lead to an MVP and a, and a long career. I would say to whom, to whomever, like, give it you all, man, because this really is a great opportunity. Make sure you're ready at all times. You know, you never know who you're talking to. You never know uh, what situation you're going to be in. So just make sure you're there to present it yourself you know, in the right way at all times, no matter what you're doing, whether it's on the field, getting food, you know, in the, in the lobby, things like that. Whatever you're doing, make sure you're there presenting yourself the right way and really go out there and make a name for yourself, and it'll, it'll help you out a lot. Come here humble um, and hungry. You get a week of being right in front of these guys to show them what you're all about. I've put in four or five years at this college, and here's why you need to take me. So I, I'm senior ball all the way. What an endorsement uh, for the game to come from some Hall of Famers who were just inducted at a great ceremony this summer. Uh, Jim, guys obviously did a great job. I mean, what better you know, way to influence kids to come to the game and to put that out on tape than to hear it from guys like that, Jim, that have done it? Yeah, I love, I love to hear from that from those guys, and that's why the Hall of Fame event is so great because you hear their stories, you know, exactly. like, like hear from Philip Rivers that he had the opportunity to come down and play for the San Diego Chargers staff at the time, and yeah. that's the last team that coached in the Senior Bowl that actually drafted a quarterback from the game. So it's been a while. <laughs> it's wow. been a while. Wow. It's like been that. a while. That's so but true. no, those, those, guys are, those guys are our best salesmen, the guys like Buck that played in the game. Uh, okay, well, they can't do it by themselves. And when we come back here on our Move the Stick Senior Bowl roster reveal show, going to look at some of their targets here. And Clayton Toon will have a familiar face in the game. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. Wide receivers and tight ends heading to Mobile under the spotlight when we come back. We have not had an Ivy League player in the Senior Bowl for six years, and we've only had two Princeton players in the history of the Senior Bowl in our game. The first one in 1951, and then the last one was Karan Reed, I think in 2014. But we got another one this year. Where's Andre? Hey, Andre. Draft starts in Mobile. 
Better believe it, Andre Yeshiva. Love it. Getting the invite. Those small school invites are fantastic, and it's just further proof that it doesn't matter what league you play in, the Senior Bowl will find you. So from the Ivy League and Andre Yeshivas to the CFP in Michigan's Ronnie Bell coming from Michigan, had a terrific year. For the second straight year, a wide receiver who gets to play in another game in his home stadium. Jalen Wayne from South Alabama after we had Jalen Tolbert, a Dallas Cowboys draft pick a year ago in last year's game. Uh, love seeing these receivers that are headed down to Mobile. Uh, Jim, which of these guys uh, particularly intrigues you out of this group uh, that, that, uh, that's heading down? Well, I think the guy that might have the most to gain of anyone in this group is Dontavian Wicks from Virginia. I mean, he's a guy going into the year at second round grades from a lot of teams. They have the coaching turnover, you know, change in scheme. I think Brennan Armstrong, the quarterback, was a guy we were high on coming into the year. Struggled a little bit, but Dontavian, when you just grade the athletes, not grading the football players or the receivers, you just grade athletes in this group, he might be the best one. And why I say that is you watch the double move route stuff. Like this guy can really double move people. He had, four, he had 1,200 yards as a, as a junior, only 400 this year. So production dropped off, had some drops. Clean up some of the drops during the week um, and show the, show the teams the athleticism. Again, I think of all the, anyone in this group, he's got as much to gain as, as anyone. Yeah, almost kind of the opposite of that. If you go to Xavier Hutchinson from Iowa State, this was not a good year for the Iowa State football program. They've been so good under Matt Campbell. This year they took a step back, but this was a bright spot for them. High volume guy. You look at the numbers there, 107 catches, over 1,100 yards. You can play him inside, you can play him outside. I want to see with him just the true athleticism. What does that look like when you see him in person? Does he have juice? Can he get on top of guys? He's an excellent route runner. He's got strong hands. Uh, he's one I'm looking forward to watching there in Mobile. You know, DJ, on the podcast, Ray, we, we've talked a few times about the guys that are having success immediately in the National Football League. They're the craftsmen, the skilled players. So that's why I want to see Rashi Rice from SMU. The reason why, he's so productive. Talk about 233 receptions over his career, over 3,000 yards, 25 touchdowns. So when you see guys that are productive, had this many reps, running routes, being able to be uh, the, the number one receiver in their offense, they have an opportunity to have a lot of success in the National Football League. I want to see him show up and show out down in Mobile. Uh, a, a guy that I'm kind of interested in uh, that I, I think if, if I'm an Iowa football fan, one of the things that frustrates me most about this season after our uh, ineptitude on offense was the fact that we had the Big Ten receiver of the year sitting in our backyard and we let him go to Purdue and put up 110 catches for 1,300 <laughs> yards in 12 I think touchdowns. he made the right choice. I think he did. My goodness. Um, apparently, he also averaged 35 yards against uh, a catch against the team that I follow quite closely in the regular season finale, but I didn't remember it, so I had to go back and I wanted to watch the Syracuse <laughs> game uh, where he absolutely went off. So uh, to our director, Sarah, to Andrew Siciliano, Scott Hansen, and the millions of Syracuse alums in this business, uh, Charlie Jones uh, destroyed you in that game up in the Carrier Dome or whatever they call that thing now. Uh, he is a complete player. I just like that he could do it everywhere. Wide receiver, quick screen, deep ball, contested catch. Uh, put the ball in his hands and let him go. He is, a, he is a fun dude to watch. And with that, let's now get to some of the tight ends that are going to be trying to make an impact down in Mobile. Uh, and with that, uh, you see one name on there that might sound familiar to you. Will Mallory from Miami comes from one of the great football families. Dad Mike, longtime NFL coach, really good player down there for the Hurricanes. Uh, DJ, who jumps out to you off this list? Yeah, I'm going to go to Clemson and Davis Allen. This is somebody I didn't really know a lot about when I popped in the tape, and this is a loaded tight end group. And This is a good group that Jim's got here uh, going to Mobile. But when you watch Davis Allen, Really moves, a smooth mover, moves like a wide out on the outside, understands how to use his body and frame to kind of wall guys off. And he's got some athleticism and wiggle after the catch. So uh, a really, really solid player. And I think man, this might be the best tight end draft we've had in five to ten years. It is loaded this year. Yeah, it's loaded. And we think about the tight end. The tight end really comes into play on third down and down the red zone. And Cameron Littell from Alabama is a guy that puts the ball into paint. 12 touchdowns over the last two years. Love the size. 6'5", 244 pounds. Natural pass catcher. And as we're looking at these teams that are sometimes using these jumbo wideouts at tight end, he's another one of these guys that might be able to create mismatches, particularly down in the red zone. And the cool thing with Latu Buck, too, he went there as a linebacker. So he's mm. played defense. He can tackle people. He can play on special teams. I'll talk about Luke Musgrave from Oregon State. I mean, I think he's a guy right now – Talk about under-the-radar players. He only played two games this year, so he's, he's been battling through an injury, but a big-frame guy that can really, really run. Talk about guys that can get down the field, make plays in the past game, and he's got the frame to play and plays an attached wide. So we're seeing some clips here of him running after the catch, but I think it's going to be the size-speed combo that puts him up in the top two or three guys in this class. You talk to the NFL evaluators, which we do, putting this roster together. It was him or Dalton Kincaid from Utah. It was everybody's top one or two in the in the senior class. Yeah, I'm, I'm – 
put my name on on this guy right now oh. in terms of when you it's limited jim's talking about with the injury but he's he might run in the four fours he Ooh. is big he is fast and he is somebody i think coming out of the senior bowl we saw it last year uh with ucla's tight end greg dulcich greg yeah, dulcich yeah. nobody could cover him yeah. if he's healthy and shows up in mobile i think he'll be the name that comes out of that with the most juice and the most buzz yeah, dulcich had uh, some flashes as a rookie this year for the denver broncos Absolutely. catching passes from russell wilson uh certainly and and one of the names that kind of could have been on that board right was Braden willis uh, from from Oklahoma, who we're going to talk about here in just a minute when head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, Brent Venables, joins us. Four guys heading to Mobile from Norman. Who sticks out to him on that group? Coming up after this. All right, back here with you on our Move the Sticks Senior Bowl roster reveal show. Taking a look at the Senior Bowl acceptances coming from the Oklahoma Sooners, a quartet of talented Sooner players are headed down to Mobile after Coach Brent Venables uh, starting to put his stamp on that program back at OU, just completing his first year as the head coach uh, there in Norman. It's our pleasure now to welcome in the Oklahoma Sooners head coach Brent Venables back here with us. Uh, coach, thanks so much for spending some time uh, here with us. Rhett Lewis, Daniel Jeremiah, Bucky Brooks, and Jim Nagy here. And, uh, you know, Coach, as, you, as I mentioned, you, you start to continue to put your stamp on this program. To see four of your guys headed down to Mobile as a part of the Senior Bowl, what can that do for your program? Well, it gives our, all of our guys, you know, uh, something to shoot for, something, a uh, standard of excellence. Uh, you know, you just don't uh, – fall into the senior bowl you know it's the best of the best are chosen and and so for for our guys it gets uh, our guys to go represent a great brand uh, in the right way and it gives all of our our younger guys recruits all of that uh something a standard of excellence to shoot for uh you know as they develop throughout their career and and that's what i love this is a developmental game the more you play the better you get and so even for you know some of our guys that you know, looking at opportunity, you know, some of it, a three-year window, a four-year window, a five-year window, it happens at different times for different guys. And, and, and again, the, the more seasoned and experienced you are, the better you get. And, and so what an opportunity it is for our guys to go compete against the best of the best, to work with NFL coaches uh, and schemes, you know, for the week, to be able to interview in front of, you know, the entire NFL. Uh, what a great venue the Senior Bowl provides you know, for, for, our, for our guys. Hey, Brent, uh, just question about Eric Gray. So you're coming from Clemson. You've got a guy like Travis Etienne that can play on all three downs. Like, how great was it stepping into a situation where you've got a guy in Eric Gray that's got a similar skill set that you can just leave out on the field? I mean, he, he ends his career there uh, at Oklahoma with 99 career catches, which is a ton for a college back. No question. And what I love about, you know, what Jeff Levy, our offensive coordinator, uh, has been able to do with Eric, it, it has exposed to him to all the different things that people want to see, whether it's uh, certainly running the rock and the instincts, um, how he plays behind his pads. Uh, you know, he can get outside, inside, certainly th catching the ball out in space and being able to make people miss at the second and the third level. Uh, the toughness that, it, that this offense allows our guys to, to be able to play uh, really displayed all of Eric's best qualities. Um, he was an absolute uh, stud for us this year. Uh, tremendous durability. Uh, just a, a great, great competitor and great teammate. Very unselfish. DeMarco Murray, one of the best to ever play here at Oklahoma and obviously one of the best to play in the NFL the last several years. Uh, what a fantastic opportunity it was for Eric to be mentored and coached and developed. Uh, by one of the all-time greats here at Oklahoma in DeMarco, a fantastic football coach. Uh, but for us, man, Eric was able to do it all. And, and I think that there's nothing from a, a question mark standpoint, there's nothing that the NFL uh, won't be able to see and evaluate on tape when it comes to, the, to, uh, to Eric. You know, amazing leader of the things that you're not quite sure what, as you peel the onion back and look at the player's resume, you know, for me as a coach, what I have great appreciation and thankfulness for is the leadership, uh, the everyday competitive toughness uh, that Eric brought, you know, to our locker room and the practice fields day in and day out. And uh, really, you know, we, you know, for our offense, you know, we led the Big 12 in rushing. 
uh, led by uh, Eric and again his tremendous durability. He fought through and played through a, a bunch of injuries throughout the year. And so just have a, a, a genuine thankfulness uh, for, for Eric and, you know, what he brought to the table day in and day out. Yeah, I think he was the fastest to 1,400 yards. Not to, to cut you off, he was the fastest to 1,400 yards uh, at Oklahoma, a place with incredible tradition and, and history, both recently and the long term. Uh, but the fastest to 1,400 yards since since Adrian Peterson. You know, Coach, you talk about tradition, you talk about running backs, but you guys also have an impressive history when it comes to tight ends. Talk a little bit about Braden Willis and what he brings to the table. Oh, God. <laughs> For me, is his competitive toughness and his leadership. He was an absolute dog when it comes to uh, competing um, day in and day out, but on game day, no, nobody in our team exemplified the toughness better than Braden Willis. Uh, he loves to block, a devastating blocker at the second and the third level. Uh, his strain, um, day in and day out, as good as I've been around. Uh, his ability to catch the ball and uh, do things in space. You know, he can attack you and stress you vertically. Uh, he can help set an edge, but man, he loved to block. And uh, what a, a punishing finisher. Uh, that he was, but he played, you know, give or take him. Uh, he might have been our, you know, most valuable player on special teams as well. Easily uh, could have won that award. Uh, just a, an all-around, you know, terrific football player. Uh, great, great toughness. He'll immediately make your locker room better because of his tough toughness, his leadership, his buy-in, his unselfish uh, mindset. And, uh, and, again, has a unique skill set to both be able to play in the box, in you know, as an attached tight end, flex him out, what he can do out of the backfold, and then again, uh, setting the edge and, uh, you know, uh, putting his tattoo on, on linebackers on the second <laughs> level. He is really, really good. Coach, I want to get your, your thoughts on Jalen Redmond, your defensive lineman, um, but before you give us your thoughts on that, can you confirm whether or not there is a wine cellar behind you in that office? Because it is rather impressive, the background <laughs> we're staring at right now. Hey, I take no credit. Uh, this is uh, Coach Stoops and his wife, uh, Carol. Uh, <laughs> before. Coach Stoops never lived in it. Uh, he actually he retired as they were moving in. So, uh, oh. But, yeah, beautiful. Uh, no wine. Uh, no wine in the office. <laughs> nice. I love um, it. How about Jalen Redmond, Coach? <laughs> yeah, Jalen Redmond, a fantastic uh, athlete. You know, he's been, a, uh, been in our program a long time and had his best year uh, that he's had, you know, uh, had some injuries, so he kind of fought through that this year, but have great appreciation, has tremendous upside. His best football is ahead of him, uh, incredibly explosive, really twitched up. Um, probably his best attribute is as a pass rusher, um, but he's he's devastating at the point of attack as well. Uh, just continue to fine-tune some things fundamentally, but his best football is ahead of him. Uh, great basketball player in high school. Wants to be a basketball coach when it's all said and done, um, but you're getting a very explosive, disruptive player that, again, he's again his best football and development still in front of him. And, Coach, over on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage, uh, it turns out Norman will not be the end of the road for Wanye Morris. Um, <laughs> wow. Who, of course, Boys to Men reference. Was <laughs> named after uh, one of the singers there, Boys to Men. Uh, I mean, are we talking about a renaissance man here? Is there is there equal musical talent as there was on the field? <laughs> yeah, he can he can really do it all. And just, you know, his, his football, tremendous athlete, you know, finding athletic guys that can protect the passer uh, are, are hard to find, as we know. Um, really developed as a, as a run blocker as well, but a tremendous athlete. You know, he probably played 90, probably 90 plus percent of all of our reps uh, there this year. Missed uh, missed a, a short time with uh, a concussion, but Wanya is a fantastic athlete. Know him. We recruited him when I was at Clemson uh, from uh -huh. Grayson uh, High School. And, and again, he's played a ton of, uh, of winning football. And uh, Wanya, uh, he will only uh, continue to add, uh, bring value to himself as people, more and more people get a chance to be around him. Incredibly uh, bright, likable, a uh, great teammate, loves to compete. And, uh, and again, really, really light-footed for a big guy. And uh, again, same thing for, for Wanya. His best football is still in front of him. Uh, love where he's at right now and what's in front of him. 
Well, it sounds like uh, your guys down in Mobile are going to be really popular amongst NFL evaluators. Uh, Coach, thanks for spending some time here with us today on our Senior Bowl roster reveal show. Wish you all the best as you continue uh, uh, starting to prepare for next season. Thanks very much. Yep. Appreciate you all having me on. Boomer Sooner. See you in Mobile, Brent. All right, and speaking of Monye Morris, uh, when we come back, we're going to look at some of his pals. They're going to join him in the offensive line room as well as some of those on the opposite line of scrimmage down in Mobile. That's when we come back here on our Move the Sticks Senior Bowl roster reveal show. All right, welcome back, everybody, to our Move the Sticks Senior Bowl roster reveal show as we get to the big fellas and some of the offensive linemen here. Florida showcasing one of their positions of strength with a pair of their Gators heading down to Mobile this year. And the Joe Moore Award-winning top offensive line in college football, well represented in the Senior Bowl as well with a pair of Wolverines in the game, including a phenomenal center, Olu Oluwatimi. But of course, everybody wondering who the next Quinn Miners or Cole Strange small school mauler might be, and we'll get to that here a little bit. Uh, you also saw a player who was on the field in the CFP National Championship game at SoFi Stadium. Steve Avia from TCU will head down to Mobile to finish off his college career. Uh, but Jim, I want to talk to you a little bit about Tennessee's Darnell Wright. Yeah, of all the players on the board, regardless of position, might be the most improved guy we saw this year. It, it sounds simple, right? You move a guy from left tackle to right tackle, not that big a deal. We had a late-round grade on Darnell right over the summer uh, when, when he was playing left tackle as a junior. They moved him to the right side this year. A lot of credit to the offensive line coach. A lot of credit to Darnell, but he almost looks like a different player. The hand use just clamping people down. I think he got a lot of buzz coming out of the Alabama game and what he did to Will Anderson. Um, so he's a guy that, again, late round pick to now a guy that's going to be in the conversation for the first right tackle taken in this year's draft. I think he's a lock to go somewhere on day two. So really, a cool, really cool to see a guy make a big jump like that awesome. in his senior year. You know, you talk about guys making cool jumps. How about some of the small school standouts? So we go to North Dakota State, Cody Mock. And like, I shouldn't call North Dakota State a small school because they're always competing at the highest level, even though they're national runner-ups this year. That's South right. They knocked them off. But this is a guy that is versatile. We've seen a ton of players come from that program, have success in the National Football League. Cody Mock is the next one to do so. There's always certain programs, too, that do a good job with offensive linemen. I think of Billy Napier when he was down at Louisiana. Then he gets the job at Florida. Done a phenomenal job. And why not take one of the best guys with you? Uh, <laughs> might be the top interior offensive lineman in this entire draft class in Osiris Torrance. Did a nice job there with the Raging Cajuns. Okay, let's see how he does in the SEC. More than held his own. Big, physical, mauler. I think gap scheme teams are going to really like him. He can move people at the point of attack. Again, a nice job by Billy Napier identifying, developing him. And then why not give him an opportunity to show it off at the SEC level, which he did. Yeah, I mean, might end up being one of the best guards to ever play at Florida in just one year. Is the only consensus first-team All-American that they've ever had at that position. So certainly made an impact uh, there as well. Let's get to the other side of the ball, shall we? The defensive linemen. So these players that you're going to be seeing flash through your screen here are both interior defensive linemen and edge rushers. Uh, and you'll have a duo of D-line studs from the Alabama Crimson Tide and DJ Dale and Byron Young. Uh, Ali Gay from LSU looking to get after quarterbacks in Mobile. And then how about Isaiah Foskey from Notre Dame bringing back-to-back 10-sack -back seasons down to the Senior Bowl. And by the way, as we get to the last group here on this page, that is not a typo. Another mm. Byron Young right. and another good Tennessee volunteer. Guys, as we talk about some of these players, let's start with the interior D lineman and one that intrigues you, Buck. How about Zach Pickens? Zach Pickens, a former five-star player, a guy in high school who played fullback while also playing D-line. And when you see the athleticism, interior penetrator, we talk about building your team. you got to have some guys that can create chaos at the line of scrimmage. He's one that can do so, has pass rush ability to also go with his ability to stop the run. Love the athleticism. I think he's a very intriguing prospect. Yeah, talk about athletes at this position. Keon White from Georgia Tech. We were doing a guy from, for the game a couple years ago that's now playing for the New York Giants, uh, blanking on his name right now. Uh, isn't that great? Yeah, no, no, I'm nice. on uh, <laughs> But Keon White was popping on the tape, and he uh, asked the guys in the office, hey, look this guy up. He's only a freshman, 19 tackles for loss as a first-year defensive player. Keon White, he, he's 292 pounds. He moves like a 265-pound guy. So you're looking for that smaller man movement, some of the natural pass rush. In terms of the guys that make money in one-on-one -on -one pass rush drills mm -hmm. this year, I think Keon White's at the top of that list. And I like the fact you can stress some of these interior offensive linemen with different types of defensive tackles. And how about this? When you have Baylor Siaka, Ika, who came from LSU. This is a mauler. This is a not quite the athlete that Vita Vea is, but the same exact body type. He's a pocket pusher. 
And covering the Charger games and seeing it around the league, not just with the Chargers, but other teams, playing so much too high coverage, playing with light boxes, this is the type of player I think you're going to see with increased value with the way the game is played right now. He can play a gap and a half. He can two gap. Uh, he's going to help you get to third down and then eventually be able to rush the quarterback. So you, if you have anchor issues as an interior offensive lineman, you're going to want to count the line and <laughs> you're not sure going you're to not. want to get in line with him. <laughs> well, and look, we do love the one-on-one -on -one pass rush drills with the offensive lineman, the defensive lineman, and those edge rushers in particular. DJ, which one of that group uh, that uh, stands out to you? Well, this is something I haven't seen a lot of, but there's buzz. You make phone calls, you hear about these names. I'm excited to really see him up close and in person. It's Keanu Benton from Wisconsin. I was talking to Jim about him a little bit earlier today. And just, you know, the limited stuff I've seen, just some cut-ups, I'm going to dig in, but has the ability to kind of flip his hips. He's got some real athleticism, some twitch inside. Uh, somebody that I think with traits, you get down to the Senior Bowl, you get in one-on-ones, you get a chance to really help yourself. He's in that list of guys to me. I'm looking forward to really digging in and studying. Yeah, you brought up his name earlier, Rhett, with the with two double-digit yeah. sack years, Isaiah Foskey at Notre Dame. I mean, that's a room we've tapped into with Adeogan Deji, second-round pick to the Falcons, Dalen Hayes before that to the Baltimore Ravens. Now we're bringing Foskey down. I think the question is going to be in terms of the ability to bend the edge. He has length. He has power. Obviously, very, very productive. Um, you know, a high-character player, too. But how, how well can he really turn that corner? That's going to be the question. Uh, I think he's going to have a huge week. Again, this is one of those junior ads for us was, was a big get. Uh, excited to get Isaiah down there. Look, outstanding player. You see him off the edge. The production stands up on tape. Another guy who I'm excited about is Brian Young. You talk about we got two of these guys. Yeah. How do you get two? Same name, same team to have to play. Very productive off the edge. And what I really like is the motor. Nonstop player. You see a little nastiness in his play. The Volunteers emerged as a top 10 team, partially because their defense played well. He was a big part of that defense off the edge. Played some of his best ball late, a couple of sacks in his final game there for the Tennessee Volunteers as well. So looking forward to watching all of those guys get after it down there in Senior Bowl practices, which of course you're going to see here live on NFL Network. All right, when we come back, we'll continue our look at the defensive stars heading to the Senior Bowl with a look at the linebackers and defensive backs looking to make an impact in front of NFL evaluators. That's next. Mobile is the place where the senior bowl is. And I found out today that we got one guy on this team. One guy on this team. One guy on this team. Gonna get an invite to the senior bowl. Come on now. Oh, no! Man, it doesn't get much more special than that in terms of uh, announcements of invitations right there with the Mobile Zone, Robert Brazil, a Senior Bowl Hall of Famer. That's pretty cool right there, Jim. Yeah, it was pretty cool. We had a chance to go to uh, Jackson State yeah. in August and, and speak to the team and get with Coach Prime. And he wanted a guy in the game. And, uh, <laughs> and his, guy played really, his guy played great this year. So That's awesome. That Part of the – uh, linebacker core that we want to start showing you now here with some of these uh, terrific names. I really love Ivan Pace. I got to see him in uh, person and a dude that just finds the football all over the, all over the place can rush the passer um, as well from that second level as uh, we get to some of those linebacker names. Uh, of course, uh, I'll, I'll talk about that one with the, the best logo on this page in that top left hand corner here in just a little bit, but some really <laughs> some really uh, good players here from the second level of the defense coming down to make an impact, Jim. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about uh, the Washington State uh, Dion Henley that's coming down. Yeah, Dion Henley. So we had three players in last year's game from Nevada. The, the, probably the most notable right now being Romeo Dubs, the receiver from the Green Bay Packers. Well, Dion was out there and, and again, a guy that took advantage of the portal. Yep. You know, we're seeing a lot of portal talk right now and this is a guy that took full advantage. He is a run and hit linebacker. The speed jumps off the tape. The physicality, the intensity. These are the guys I love bringing to Mobile because you know what they're going to bring to just the overall practice tempo and competitiveness. So he makes plays in coverage, but just playing downhill, blitzer, do it all linebacker. Made a huge jump this year. And again, a guy that really took advantage of the portal. A guy whose neck is on a milk carton, too. I mean, this guy has, <laughs> he is muscles on top of muscles. He, he looks the part, for sure. <laughs> um, I'm going to go Will McDonald, Iowa State. I talked about Xavier Hutchinson from Ohio State, a little, or from Iowa State a little bit earlier. Uh, this is some 
somebody that I watched over the summer. I actually watched him before last year's draft. thought there was a chance we could see him there. Mm. You talk about bendy and loose. Kind of the opposite of Foskey. The way you were talking about Foskey earlier, the question with him, can he bend? The question with McDonald is going to be, does he have speed to power? Can he really get into guys? Can he really shot guys with his hands? Because the ability to bend the edge, not a problem at all in his game. Yeah, you talk about not a problem at all. It's not a problem when you can find guys who get sacks. Yeah. So Isaiah Lamb from F A from Florida A and M is a guy that certainly can get it done. 2021 Buck Buchanan Player of the Year, meaning he was the best FCS Defensive Player of the Year, had 19 and a half sacks, followed up with eight sacks in nine games this year. This is a guy that is bendy, is explosive, will have an opportunity to showcase his skills, and anyone that had the opportunity to see James Houston kind of rise up the charts and have a productive right. year in Detroit. Certainly all eyes will be on Isaiah Land. All right, Jim, let's talk some oh, cornerbacks here. Sam, let's uh, let's get this thing moving here. Oh, oh, was there one, was there one without, more? And this Sorry. is not a homer yeah. pick. I mean, I, even though I've been talking to Jim about uh, Cam Jones uh, now for a while, and obviously his former defensive coordinator is now down there in your backyard in Mobile leading these South Alabama uh, Jags. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's the, the more you talk to, to folks around the IU program about Cam Jones, they'll tell you what a phenomenal player he is. But the relationships that he has built with coaches, kids, with his teammates like he is just a phenomenal human being this will be a big week for him down in mobile was off to a really good start to this season kind of taking over as the guy on that second level after micah mcfadden left and was drafted by the new york giants um jim i mean like he you know got hurt in the nebraska game didn't play for the rest of the season so real opportunity to showcase his skills show teams that he's healthy and ready to we make got a time on this i mean you know, how we Woo. just keep going yeah, here yeah, yeah, good. unbelievable uh, you know <laughs> shot clock uh okay and you want to do the rest of the show <laughs> let's get to the cornerback that are headed down to Mobile, shall we? Um, I, I guess, you know, Jim, you just decided to take the whole Illinois secondary, uh, which is cool because they were really good. Well, well their D coordinator did get a head coaching That's job right. out of it. So. That's right. We won't talk about where he's uh, coaching. But, uh, no, yeah, Quan Martin, fantastic. Uh, Witherspoon, I mean, he's got a chance to be a you know, first-round pick this year. So, And then you get a look um, at, at a few more of these guys as well. I mean, this is, uh, is going to be a fun group. Another South Alabama Jag is headed down with Daryl Luter Jr. Always fun to see those guys in the crowd reaction uh, down there at Hancock Whitney when they get there inside the stadium in front of the hometown crowd. Uh, so let's start uh, here uh, with you, Bucky, and uh, give us a corner that you like in this game. Uh, Chris Smith from the back-to-back -back national champs. That's right. Coming from Georgia. You want a dog. I'm not just just talking about their logo, their mascot, their nickname. You want a guy who's very competitive and feisty. He can do all those things. And this is a guy who has always been on the radar. People love the way he plays. He's tough. He's physical, aggressive, has some versatility. He is going to be a top prospect. Yeah, I talk about a guy, another guy took advantage of this year. Didn't get a senior bowl invite last year. Came back, got one this year. Caillou Blue Kelly is the next name for me from Stanford. KBK. Uh, Love the guys that are Senior Bowl legacies. His dad, Brian Kelly, played in our game. Former Buccaneer safety, played with John Lynch there in Tampa. But Caillou, long. We don't have verified measurables on him now, but you watch the tape, you just see the length. I mean, it's a big, long corner with movement skills. Press man teams are really going to like him. Stanford didn't have a great year. Um, this guy's a high-end cover player. Had really good junior tape. This guy's been at the top of our, our cornerback stat going all the way back to last spring. Um, you know, again, look at some of the plays this guy's making on the ball. Long, long guy, finisher. Um, should have a great week in man-man coverage. It's all in the family. There you go. Yes. Nicely done. Yes. I'll tell you what, I, I was actually talking about him a little bit over the summer with David Shaw because of that game right there, what he did with Drake London was a great matchup between two big physical guys. Uh, I'm going to go to Illinois. You guys talked about Illinois having a, a loaded group this year. There's no, no secret why they had the year that they had. Uh, Devin Witherspoon, to me, uh, talking to guys around the league, I haven't got to the corners yet in my study, so I'm, I'm looking forward to digging in. But, Jim, we were talking about him a little bit earlier as well. When I call around, like, give me the names, give me the names, give me the names. His name comes up near the top of the list for everybody that you talk to. Somebody that got to be one of the higher rated guys in the game this year. Looking forward to seeing him down there in Mobile. Yeah, well, they, he's got company uh, back there in the Illinois starting secondaries. We get to the safeties here that are headed down to Mobile in this year's game. Uh, getting uh, excited for this group as well. And, well, um, that last name uh, for Sidney Brown should also sound familiar. I guess you got a built-in roommate situation here, uh, right? With, with the Brown Brothers. Sydney. Yeah, they, I mean, it's, it's, it's 100%, uh, right? And, and so three of the four or five starting Illinois secondary members heading down there as well. Jair Brown, really good player from Penn State. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get a, a Kayvon Merriweather, uh, who, who did some good things for that terrifically talented Hawkeye defense. Let's start here, though, with an SEC safety from LSU, Jim. 
Yeah, Jay Ward, he's played a ton of safety there at LSU, but this year they moved him to nickel. Um, the new staff comes in, they moved him to nickel, and that was his spot. You look at a guy that's going to be a high-end nickel at the next level, he's long, he's wiry, he lacks some bulk, but the guy just flies around and hits people, right? And and just the play style, the feel in the slot, he's a really good blitzer. Uh, the position move really did him well. Not to say he can't play safety at the next level, but I see this guy as a starting nickel early in his career. Yeah, I'm going to go Jordan Battle uh, at Alabama. Another guy I feel like I've been watching They've got some pretty good safeties there. Yeah, they have. It feels like he's been there for a long time. Thought he might come out last year. He's got tremendous awareness and instincts. I believe it was the SEC championship game last year as a pick six in that one. Just always around the football, smart, heady. I think he's going to be one of those guys. Not only what he does on the field, I think he'll have a chance to impress guys in the meeting room down there in Alabama. Well, look, we can't talk about corners without leaving a school that was known for their play on the perimeter. How about Jamie Robinson from Florida State? You talk about FSU being back, and there are a lot of people that are excited to be back. One double-digit games. This is a guy that played a huge role. There you see seven interceptions in his career. You're looking for guys who have ball schools, ball skills, guys who are active and around it all the time. He's one of those. Really good player. He's getting some Jalen Petrie comps around the league Ooh, right now. Jalen Petrie had a great rookie year. Yes, yeah, really did. Down there for the Houston Texans. Okay. Well, we've done all the position players on the field, if you will. And while, you know, Georgia may have won back-to-back -back national championships, the SEC may have won four straight national championships. 50% of the senior bowl specialists come from the Big Ten, Jim. <laughs> well, you look at the specialist group. You've got, you've got three former NFL scouts sitting up here. And the best thing about our jobs right now is we never have to Don't take have the stopwatch about out of the yeah. bag ever again. Absolutely. So I really lean on the, the NFL teams for this. And a lot of guys in the kicking space, there's a lot of kicking gurus, specialist gurus out there. It's a great group. I mean, these guys all were at the top of the list for those guys. And we watched them a little bit, but not like we used to have to. When you don't have to touch the toe times. You don't miss that is. stuff? Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, well, speaking of, you know, inside Two and a half step, right-footed punter. Uh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah. yeah hang time. Uh, so, so speaking of like inside scouting here a little bit, like DJ, take us into your process, you know, as we kind of wrap this up here on what Senior Bowl week means for this whole process. And, and I know we're all excited to get down to Mobile. It's huge. You get a chance to see good on good. I, I love, I'm partial to the one-on-ones. If you have sure. a question about a corner speed, well, guess what? You go in the one-on-ones in the Reese's Senior Bowl, you're going to get challenged vertically. We're going to be able to see, can this guy run? Can he catch up? You have an offensive lineman. We talked about it a little bit earlier. You have questions about his anchor. Well, you go see that big defensive tackle from Baylor. We're going to find out whether or not you can sit in there and anchor. It's a place where questions get answered, and it's a place where each and every year, Jim, we've seen guys up their stock. You've got a chance to really help yourself down there that week. When I think about the senior bowl, I think about small school guys having an opportunity. We talk about as scouts being on the road, trying to find somewhere where you can level the playing field to make these projections at the next level, where the senior bowl provides you with an opportunity. You're a small school guy. You get to go against players from Power 5 schools, and if you show and prove, man, you get a little extra check in that box, and so this is a great great opportunity for the guys that might not have been talked about or seen throughout the fall to really show up and have an opportunity to really increase their stock. Yeah, Buck, the small school stuff happens every year. You go back to last year, just last year alone. Christian Watson at this time last year, yeah. fourth or fifth round draft pick for most NFL teams. Cole Strange, Tennessee Chattanooga, fifth round for most teams. Both, you know, Cole gets to the first round, Christian Watson, 34 overall. I'd just like to say, you know, in terms of the Senior Bowl, and we've been going to the game, I went to the game 23 years before I even took this job, um, but I just love getting to know the players, right? The scouts go into the schools, they talk to everyone at the school. What's this kid like? What's his story? you get to hear the story from the player at the Senior Bowl, and that's when it really starts. That's, that's when you feel you make the connections. That's where scouts can feel like, you know what, I can pound the table for this guy. I know this kid now, yeah. right? Like, it's different than just the tape. You get to know him as a person. So, um, And I, I just before we get off, I want to thank you guys for having me ah. back out here and, and highlighting the game. Can't wait to get you down to Mobile and appreciate everything you guys do for our game. The other thing I, I really actually do look forward to is just being around the people down there, and yeah. it's a lot because of you and mm -hmm. your staff and the job that you guys do, making everybody in the whole NFL community feel welcome. It's really one of our favorite weeks of the entire year, and the facilities are unbelievable now. Yeah. Um, the food's always good. You, oh, yeah. you, can't, you can't beat this week down there. And you Get plenty of Reese's peanut butter cups. What uh, more do you want? Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, and, and you know, as you were telling that story, Jim, I couldn't help but think like the draft starts in Mobile. It's not just a saying; like it, it truly means something, especially to NFL players and to all of us as we really get to know these players um, much more on their path to the draft, which we're also excited uh, to kick off here in April on NFL Network. And of course, you've got all of the Senior Bowl festivities coming to you uh, here from NFL Media, starting with uh, the Senior Bowl live practices Tuesday, January 31st at 12:30 Eastern time. You're going to see all of that on NFL. 
NFL Plus. Awesome opportunity now to go up and subscribe for NFL Plus and, and get some really terrific content down at Mobile with the Senior Bowl and those three days of practices. And then, of course, the game kicking off 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday, February 4th, right here on NFL Network. Uh, certainly looking forward to it, Jim. And I know you, your work's not done, right? I mean, it's still, the, the roster's a living, breathing thing, right? And there's still more more work to be done, right? Unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, you were around earlier today. Whenever yeah. an agent calls at this time of year, Uh-oh. usually oh. not a good phone call. Put <laughs> um, that on Do Not Disturb right we, now. We got one yeah. more quarterback spot left. You know, we've got uh. this run of seven straight years with the first-round quarterback, and uh, we got one out to Will Levis from Kentucky, so we'll see. There you go. Let's, go. Uh, they, they follow all of Jim's social media and the Senior Bowl social media. you find out exactly when that comes down. Looking forward to it. Thanks again, everybody, for being here with us on our Move the Sticks Senior Bowl roster reveal show.